Hello and welcome to this series of videos about measuring, measurement technology, measuring what is it, what will be, or what, how is it defined, how is it working, and so on. When it comes to measurement or measuring technology, I think most of us do think about something like, like this here. Huh? Measuring length, either with this simple, simple triangle here, or maybe this is more, more like a, a child's play thing. Yeah, maybe something like this. Yeah, measuring, or maybe some of you think of things like that. Yeah, so this is a multimeter. Yeah, so measurement. Yeah. What is measurement? Measurement, measurement is a good, a good thing to take care about illusions. Yeah? The humans, humans are not really able to, to really quantify things. Yeah? So uh, here, for instance, that's a visit at, at IKEA. Yeah, not to make any any. Uh, advertisement but here we bought new new furniture yeah. here I was very confident that my car is big enough and I piled on and piled on and piled on and suddenly my wife asks if we could manage to bring this home huh? of course I mean there's a big car yeah, well I should have measured Typical, uh, typical misjudgment, because humans tend to to see it in scale. If you're in a big room, a big thing looks small. If you're in a small room, the same thing looks looks huge. Simply, yeah. So humans are not able to quantify things. So measurement is the best method, is the best method of getting rid of this. Yeah, of of not to to fall into illusions. Yeah, the best method against illusions is measuring, weighting, counting things like this, quantify things. Yeah. And exactly this is what measuring technique is about. Yeah, we want to have a number, a number which is not not uh, relying on our on our feeling yeah? we want to have it fixed let's see what is necessary so most most measuring systems how are they built up yeah? so we'll make a small a small drawing here i will write uh, measurement system in each in each measurement system we do have something we do have something which is called a sensor okay so this is a Sensor. Yeah. Messwert aufnehmen in German. The sensor. What does the sensor do? The, the physical the physical quantity, so the thing I want to measure is having influence on this sensor. Okay? So that's that's here the physical part. physical quantity that's influencing the sensor somehow and the sensor the sensor it changes changes some some property okay 
this either be a mechanical property or very common are electrical electrical properties yeah so it's changing something sensors there might be active sensors okay active sensor gives energy is not relying on power supply the physical quantity is influencing the sensor and an active sensor gives energy away yeah? and there is also a passive sensor and this is just just changing but without without giving energy away yeah? so maybe it's changing like for instance the shape if it's an, a mechanical thing or uh, the resistance if it's an electrical property that's it yeah? so there are active sensors passive sensors however what all sensors are in common that it changes some property yeah under the influence of a physical quantity okay these sensors usually are very very small these changes of the sensors are very small yeah? so we cannot we cannot watch it yeah or very very rarely or very hard it's very hard to watch because the changes are so small so we need something which make these changes stronger bigger yeah so we need something in here in our measurement system yeah which is amplify and that's an amplifier the amplifier the amplifier takes the signal from the sensor and is gaining the signal okay it's making it bigger simply so that we can watch it easily yeah? so that there is enough uh, there is enough power to move to move uh, a point or something like this yeah this amplifier this changes in the sensor are very small and after the amplifier it's big yeah usually the amplifier if the sensor is also requiring power supply so if it's a passive sensor for instance so if there is also a power supply then the amplifier usually provides this power supply yeah so that's the signal here and it's the supply power supply if necessary okay and the amplifier is simply gain gain the signal make the signal stronger yeah, to make it possible to observe okay. that's that's the thing of an amplifier this part here this part with the amplifier and the sensor is called uh, is called Messwert Aufnahme, yeah. Me measurement recording, yeah. It's the recording part. Yeah. Recording, observing, measuring. That's the recording part. However, just because we have now a signal which is big enough to watch we need something to watch yeah so we need here something a third thing in the chain yeah so there is for instance display okay 
there might be analog displays with a pointer, there might be some digital displays with some seven segment elements and so on, display, one possibility. Yeah? Then there might also be the possibility of computers, yeah? databases and so on, uh, uh, data recording. There might be hard drives, there might be databases, there might be tapes, whatever, whatever. Yeah. With the signal now strong enough, we can go to displays, we can go to data recording devices and so on. Okay. This thing here, yeah, this right part is called data processing. Okay, measurement processing. Here we have measurement, here we have the processing, recording, processing. Sometimes this amplifier does also a little bit of, of, of processing. What does it do? Sometimes filter. It will sometimes filter. What does it mean filter? Filter means unwanted pikes or, or something, wrong measurements need to be filtered out of the correct signal. Yeah. This is sometimes done directly in the amplifier because we know the sensor has this and this, uh, uh, this and that property and there is some, some noise on it, then we may filter it in the amplifier. This filter here and also this part. So I will take a part of the amplifier and the display, display data recording and so on. This is called the processing. Data processing. Messwertaufnahme, okay. Messwertverarbeitung. And the only part which is in the processing is this filtering of the amplifier. That's the typical, the typical structure of a measurement system. Yeah? Not all of our measurement systems are looking like this. Yeah? However, most of them do. Yeah? This is called a measurement chain because it is a chain structure. One example of what we've just seen, one mechanical example, so that it is very easy for you to understand. Uh, I draw now something and explain what it is. Yeah? So, in some measurements, we do have a thing which looks a little bit like this. It's a tube. It's a tube shaped like a G or something like this. Yeah. The thing is, if we now blow in here some air, yeah. pressure, here's pressure. Pressure from any system. Yeah. That's, that's our physical, our physical quantity, this pressure. This is what we want to measure. And this pressure now applies force to the walls of this tube. Okay, so there is there is always a little bit force here. And of course here also. Okay. And because the, the area of this tube on the outside is bigger, yeah. So there is more square meters, if there's even meters, there is more square, there is more area simply on the outside than on the inside. So the total force on the outside is bigger than on the inside. And this, this little uh, tube tries to stretch. Okay. 
This little tube is our sensor. Okay, this is the sensor which drives the the property which is changed is the form. Yeah, it's a mechanical property because of the physical quantity applied to the sensor, the sensor is changing its shape, yeah, it's changing one property. These changes are usually very small. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you heard about things like hook and and uh, uh, elasticity, el deforming things, and there is one part where the deforming is removed can be removed again. Yeah, so it's elastic, the elastic thing, and then the deformation is permanent. Of course, we do not want to make this deformation permanent. We want to have it like a spring. Yeah? So when we do not apply the pressure, it should go back to the usual form, to the original form. Yeah? It's a little bit working like this carnival. You know, this, this air whistles there, which are getting long. It's pretty much the same principle. Okay, so because we are in, in the elastic uh, area, these changes here are very small. Yeah? So we need something. We need something uh, to make them stronger or bigger. Yeah? Then there is some gears are in there usually. Yeah? Small one driving a big one and then again a small one. Yeah. This is this gearbox which is inside here is nothing more is nothing more than uh, a mechanical amplifier. Yeah. It's just amplifies, it's gaining this little movement here up and down into quite some turning of the of the middle gear. Okay, and what follows next is a pointer. We do have a pointer connected to this middle gear. That's our display. Okay, that's our display, and in total, totally, we do have now. A <laughs> Yeah, doesn't really look nice. Uh, a manometer, mechanical manometer, pressuring me pressure measurement device. We have a sensor, we have an amplifier, we have a pointing device, a display, and here we have a scale how much quantity of pressure we do have, and the more. The more we are moving here, the more pressure we will get displayed. Yeah. Issue here is usually the pressure is not constant but has some ripples on it, so the, the uh, pointer tend to shake a little bit around the position. Yeah. Then you often you see a little air bladder up here yeah, and the rest is filled with some liquid and this liquid is purely in there to prevent to add more friction yeah, and to prevent the shaking part of the pointer okay so because of this liquid in there the pointer will stay and this noise yeah, this is filtered by the liquid yeah, by the friction we will later talk about Static behavior and dynamic behavior. The static behavior is if the pressure is constant, then this thing is good. That is not that is damped a little bit, yeah, yeah. filtered a little bit. If the pressure is changing and I want to see every pressure change, then this damping is not that good. Yeah, dynamic behavior is getting worse with this liquid filled things. And maybe some of you have already seen. Uh, if there is no pressure applied, yeah, then there is already some display. Yeah. 
what happened there is that this spring here, this little tube, was not moved in elastic area. It is already too much pressure was applied and there was already permanent deformation. Yeah. So this thing you can throw away afterwards. So this is typical typical example of what we talked about, this measurement chain, in one device. Yeah. Sensor, amplifier, display, one device. These signals here, these ones, they're usually norm signals. Yeah. So, one signal which is uh, there are several signals defined, yeah. For instance, for instance, zero dot ten volt. Yeah. Zero means zero. Ten volt means maximum. This is one possible signal. Uh, voltage signal. There are also current signals, for instance, four to twenty milliamps. Yeah. Four milliamp milliamps means zero, 20 milliamps mean maximum. Yeah. Why is this four? This is a so-called life zero. Why we use this? We will see in an upcoming video in the, of this series. Okay. So there are a number of norm signals defined. These ones are very usual. Zero to 10 volt and four to 20 milliamps. Unipolar signal then there is a bipolar signals minus 10 to 10 volt and minus 20 to 20 milliamps. This is also a very common signal. Uh, which of them to choose and what are the advantages and disadvantages we will cover in the upcoming in the upcoming uh, series of this video in the upcoming videos. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, so these measurements, yeah, these are now quantified things of the physical part. Yeah? So that's not just a feeling, that's how it is. Yeah? And these signals may be displayed, recorded, or maybe even used in control systems and so on to influence the physical quantity somehow yeah? uh, that's then up to this up to the usage yeah that's then up to the processing but this measurement itself the recording uh, is is always the same okay it might be to, to ensure some product quality or whatever I said physical quantity, okay? The physical quantity is always is always uh, some number, and of course, there's not only the number. There is also the so-called unit, and what this is about with the units and so on, we will cover in the next video. For this video, it's just the structure of the measurement system. So, thank you for your attention. Hear you next time. Goodbye.